All right, let's keep talking about that muscle. So one of the questions that get asked me a lot is how long does it take to lose muscle? Now, research shows that you can lose a significant amount of muscle within weeks because if you don't use it, you end up losing it. Now, one of the ways that I see people losing muscle is if they start to either A, take up a sport, especially an endurance sport, um, or they, you know, they decrease their level of intensity of workout, their age, and then also if they're in a caloric deficit for too long, which I don't know many people that go in a caloric deficit for too long, but there are that is one of the ways that you can lose muscle. So number one, when it comes to sport, like I'm a tennis guy and once summer hits, like I still try and maintain my workouts, but definitely my workout intensity during the summer months decreases because I play, you know, an hour of intense tennis. And so I can see it in my physique. The muscle is still there, but it's definitely not as toned and defined and prominent as if I was in my off season where I'm only focusing on my lifts in the gym and pushing myself. So I push myself 100% on the tennis. And then when it comes to my in season, like when I'm working out, it's more about maintenance. And that's okay because I understand that cycle. Now, some people completely give up on the gym because now they are out taking walks. Okay. So if you're taking walks, I think walks are great, especially if you've just come off a massive injury. So if you got a knee surgery and you're just getting your, your legs back into conditioning, then yes, a walk is exactly what you need because it's way harder than sitting. But if you're going from doing hardcore circuit training five to six days a week, and then you're going down to just walking at the cabin or wherever you are, you're going to see a significant weight loss. Now, running is another one that a lot of people take up and running just like tennis is hard on the body. Now, the difference between tennis and running is that tennis is more about short spurts. And so it's not like a continuous repetitive motion. In fact, we're like really exerting ourselves to pound that ball down the line or hit that big serve and we're jumping and we're sprinting. So we're using a lot of the similar muscles that we would doing our circuit training over at Big Club. Now, when it comes to running, and I'm not a hater against running, but if you want to talk to me about gains and you want to talk to me about muscle and muscle definition, I'm going to tell you that running is good if you are just like a beginner runner and you keep your runs low. Like I'm talking 10, 15 minutes max. Keep it low. Keep it as a cross training in addition to your intense circuit training that you would do at the gym. Now, if running becomes your main hindering factor, meaning that you're coming into the gym and your knees are aching. Well, you got to understand that like most of us aren't built for running. Like if you actually look at a professional long distance runner's body, I don't think the majority of people watching this video are interested in that. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but most people want to see a lean defined body where they've got a figure. Okay. Now running is a sport and you get built around how that sport demands you to do. And so when you're doing these long repetitive runs and it's taken away from your ability to lift weights or bend your knees for that matter, then you're going to see a decrease in muscle and you're going to see a decrease in tone. It doesn't matter what you do with your nutrition. And so what I would recommend for you is that continue to do your running and either one of two things, you start to limit to your runs where the next day you use it as a determining factor of how achy your joints are. And if it's pulling away from your joints ability to lift the appropriate amount of weight that you've always been using, then you need to decrease that load. Okay. So if you were just, you know, I'm going to go do a one hour run and the next day you wake up and you can't even go down your stairs to get to the gym. That's not good right? Like, I mean, it's good if that's your goal. Like I want to be a runner and eventually your body will adapt to it, but it's going to take a couple months. So in those couple months, you got to understand that you're going to lose the visible muscle. Okay. And if you're okay with that, then keep going. But if you want to be able to see the best of both worlds, then what you need to do is use the next day as a determining factor of how you need to decrease that load for the run, maintain your workouts, but then now you need to recover like a pro. And what does recover like a pro mean? It means that you're getting a weekly massage. Yeah, it all adds up, but these guys, these pros that are doing both the best of both worlds and they look amazing like football players, then they have a massage therapist on staff that's taking care of them. Now, if you can't afford a massage therapist, then you, be, you better be down on the ground for 30 minutes minimum a day using a foam roller, using the scrape, 
deeper, you know, doing a stretch routine. Like you have to be drinking the water, drinking EAAs, making sure that you're getting adequate amounts of protein. You're keeping your body mobile. You have heat wraps on your body all day so that it's stimulating blood flow. And then you're seeing a physio or whatever maybe benefits that you have. So you have to treat yourself like an athlete. Now, the third level is you use short runs to help you burn calories because the shorter the run, especially if you're not trained, you're actually going to burn more calories because your body's not conditioned. As you get in better shape, you're going to find that you're going to burn way less calories doing running than when you started because your body gets conditioned to it. So it's no longer a calorie burner. It's just a matter of getting conditioning. So it no longer becomes a weight loss thing or fat loss thing. It's more focused on conditioning. So you decrease your runs, keep them as a cross training, but then you still focus hardcore on your workouts. So that's one of the main ways that you're going to lose muscle. A second is keeping yourself in a caloric deficit for way too long. You know, most people don't do this, but if you're under eating, let's say you're eating a thousand calories, but yet you're doing all these crazy workouts and you're burning 3000 calories, give yourself about six to eight weeks before your body starts to utilize the proteins and the calories from your muscle to be able to use for fuel for your entire body. Age obviously is a factor. As you age, your hormones decrease, your ability to recover decreases, your ability to increase muscle mass decreases. So there are like hormone replacements that you can take that a lot of people are doing. So that's something that you might want to consult with your doctor that'll keep you thriving throughout your older ages. But if you're going to age naturally, then naturally, yes, you're going to decrease your muscle. So there we have it guys. If you don't wanna lose your muscle, I know I went on a bit of a rant there, but it's from the heart, and I wanna help you see long-term success. Keep your body in a consistent rhythm. Optimize your running or your sports that maybe that you do in the summer so that you're still optimizing your gym membership and that you're working out and getting those long-term results. Find the calories that's gonna keep your energy levels high, keep the muscles fed. And then if you feel like your hormones are working against you, my recommendation is that you go see your doctor, mainly go see a specialist that specializes in male and female hormones, and they're gonna be able to help you optimize the rest of your life so that you continue to burn fat, feel good, and you never lose muscle.